The 1970s was a decade that had a lot of style. People weren't afraid to try new things and be different at the same time. However, the decade wasn't without some failures. In this video, we will have a look back at some of the 1970s fails that you may have forgotten about. Bell Telephone, who later became known as AT&T, unveiled a prototype telephone called the Model 1 Picture Phone in the 1964 World's Fair. A few of these were operational throughout the 1960s. In 1970, Bell introduced its first commercial picture phone, but the service never really caught on. They charged $160 per month for the equipment and the service, plus a fee per minute on calls. That would be at least $1,200 per month in today's money, and that's if you never used it. The other downside of this piece of technology was that it was only intended to be used for person-to-person -person calls and not full rooms of people like you might see on Skype. They tried to expand the service and even came out with a Model 2, but ultimately they pulled the plug on it in 1972. In 1982, they tried to revive it for businesses, and in 1992, they released the Videophone 2000 for home use, but both were commercial failures. In March of 2019, a pair of Mod 2 picture phones sold for $7,575 at a New York auction. Polaroid dominated the instant photography market decades before the digital camera ever did. Following the success of the SX-70 and one-step cameras, Polaroid decided to enter the home movie market in 1977. This market had been dominated by one of their competitors, which was Kodak and their Super 8 film. The Polaroid Polavision was designed to use a cartridge, which resembled a small video cassette. It could be exposed and then developed in just minutes. The captured images could then be viewed on a special tabletop viewer, or if you remove the reel of film from the inside, then it could be shown on any Super 8 projector. The only problem was, Polavision was a flop and it never really became as popular as their film cameras. You had to shoot in very bright light, colors were flat and muddy, and they couldn't record sound the way that Super 8 cameras could. This became Polaroid's first commercial failure, and they ceased production in 1979. Today you can find these cameras listed on eBay anywhere from $25 to $100. The Sansui Quadraphonic Sound was a four-channel home audio system that was completely different from the two-speaker system that people had in the early 70s. Musicians had been experimenting with the four-channel recording since the late 60s, but Sansui was the first electronics maker to develop and sell the quadraphonic amplifier for the home market in 1972. It sold for $200, which is about $1,200 today. Other competitors also introduced quadraphonic systems, and some had joystick controllers, which allowed listeners to shift the audio balance from left to right and front to back so that they could find that perfect sound. Record companies loved the idea, and some of the biggest names like Aerosmith, Eric Clapton, The Eagles, and many more released albums mixed for four-channel stereos. But many consumers couldn't justify buying a new receiver for two additional speakers, and the concept ended in 1978. The music industry then moved on to digital recording, which was the next best thing in the market. These old quadraphonic receivers can still sell for around $200 if they are in working condition. The 1970s saw a trend of incorporating natural food ingredients like lemon, honey, and other herbs into beauty and hygiene products. Clairol decided to up the game with yogurt shampoo in 1979, you know, because everyone wanted that healthy hair. Turns out the company was completely wrong. Many consumers were confused on what they had purchased and some people even tried eating it. The Laserdisc was essentially a predecessor to the DVD. It was introduced in 1978 and offered consumers a higher picture quality and sound than VHS tapes. However, they seemed to have more drawbacks than benefits. One of the biggest was the fact that you couldn't record on them. They were also pretty expensive. They hung on for a little while and then tried to make a comeback in the 1990s, but they ultimately failed for good when the DVD came on strong. 
Betamax was introduced by Sony in 1975, which was one year before JVC introduced a VHS tape. Betamax had a superior resolution and sound quality, which was why it remained a choice of different media outlets for decades. The problem with Betamax was that Sony refrained from licensing its technology to other manufacturers, which limited the variety of movies that were available on this format. Meanwhile, JVC licensed its VHS technology to any manufacturer that was interested. Betamax's share of the VCR market fell from 100% in 1975 to 10% by 1988 and it continued to dwindle in the following years. In 1974, the baby food giant Gerber came up with a new idea. Why not create baby food for adults? They believed that there would be a market for this and they couldn't be more wrong. Adults were never fond of the mushy meat and food, and Gerber's singles failed horribly bad. Downy Flakes toaster eggs were introduced in 1972. They looked like some sort of frisbee or hockey puck. They were hoping to capitalize on the popularity of other products like Pop-Tarts, but by 1975 they were removed from the store's shelves. Over the years, there have been several attempts to compete against the NFL. In 1974, the World Football League hit the field. It made it through one full season in 1974 and most of the second season when the whole idea fumbled. Their hopes of world football domination never really made it past 13 teams, one of which being in Honolulu, Hawaii. The swing bike was a bicycle that allowed the rider to steer the front wheel and the rear wheel. The design was patented by Ralph Belden in 1974 and it was sold on the market in 1975. They really weren't meant for transportation as much as they were for looking cool and doing stunts. It had a second steering wheel axis in front of the seat. You could ride with one wheel on the curb and the other one in the road in sort of an S shape. The bike was somewhat difficult to steer, which meant that it was easier to fall and get hurt. It was discontinued in 1978. As everyone knows, hot pants were huge in the 70s, but this product took it to a whole new level. These inflatable Wonder Sauna hot pants were designed to melt away fat from problem areas. Instead of eating right and exercising, you could just wear these while watching television in your recliner and eating your favorite cookies. After just days of wearing them, you could see the fat just magically disappear. If you were a guy, then hopefully the fat was the only thing that disappears. There were several different brands and variations of this product, but they were all big failures. The Sauna Hot Pants wasn't the only crazy weight loss product from the 1970s. The Twist and Tone tried to put a new twist in exercising. You could use this to lose weight and it was supposed to be fun rather than work. Best of all, it was portable. It only took a few minutes a day at home or in the office. Really all it looked like was a lazy Susan from the kitchen. There have been similar spin-offs like this going back to at least the 60s. This was just the latest version. However, none of these products ever hit it big and people just looked ridiculous while they were using them. Today, most of these products aren't much more than a memory. Very few of them have ever survived the trash dump. But if you happen to have some of these and you're willing to sell them, then perhaps you can make a pretty penny on eBay. Can you think of any other failures from the 1970s that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching.